You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan just got shocked by the microphone. No, in, it was in my head. Oh, it was all <laughs> it in was your head? No, you no, didn't no, really get... No, 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 no. <laughs> I know the, what head, you mean. the headphones shocked my ears from inside. I'm sorry I, I'm to I'm not that. safe, man. I'm sorry. I don't know why that happened. I'm the uh, worst superhero. Jeez Louise. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for uh, taking the time and being interested in me and the podcast. I, I appreciate that. Um, if you like the podcast or if you're here for Kristen Krug, don't go away. Make sure you follow us on the handles, Ryan. At Inside of You Pod on Twitter, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. That's correct. Follow us. Write a review, please. If you like the interview, write a review. Really helps the show. And subscribe. Watch on YouTube. Subscribing really helps. And I think you'll like the show, not just because you're a Kristen Krug fan, but she's amazing. Um, and a lot of other stuff going on. Make sure you go to the Inside of You online store. We've got new lunch boxes signed by me and Tom Welling, Smallville lunch boxes, a bunch of mugs, tumblers, shirts, pictures, autographs inside of you online store. Uh, you could also go to sunspin.com to get any stuff that you want from the band, sunspin hats, uh, this and that. We're playing February 26th, two shows, Saturday, February 26th, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come join us, the band. There's prizes. You'll Zoom with us. It's fun. Trust me, new people came last week. They had a blast. Um, that's about all I have to say about that. Also, if you want to help the podcast in other ways, there's a thing called Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash inside of you. Join my patron, be a patron. I'll message you right after you join. Uh, patrons just give back to the podcast and really help the podcast more than you know. So join Patreon, patreon.com slash inside of you. A big thanks to Ryan, my engineer. A big thanks to Bryce, uh, my producer, Jason, my editor, uh, everybody at Cumulus Westwood One uh, for keeping the podcast afloat. And we're doing our job. We're doing the best we can. Thank you for listening. And right now, let's do it. A lot to talk about. Let's get inside of Kristen Krug. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You look very festive. You have a sort of, a, what, what are you wearing? I like it. It's kind of like uh, the hills it's have. It's like a full thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What is, what is it? What? How would you describe that? That's. It makes me think of the, not the hills have eyes. That's a horror movie. But the other one, the um, the hills are alive with the sound of music. The sound of music, you mean? Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know. It's just like a it's like a overalls, but not. I like it. Me too. Where are you? Where's home? In Toronto. I'm in Toronto at home in my in my office. Now, word on the street is that you might be moving to Vancouver. Oh yeah, you heard about that. Yeah, what's what's that about? Yeah. Why would you want to be closer to your family? Because <laughs> I, I do. I want to be closer to my family. Aww. And, you know, my sister's got two kids now and my best friends are there. And, you know, I, I kind of miss it. Um, and it's going to be weird. I've been every day out here in Toronto. I'm like, oh, well, that's not going to be in Vancouver. This is kind of I'm constantly. Toronto is just much more cool than Vancouver is. Why is it cooler? Um, is it, it's it's First of all, like it's good. cold. It's cold in Toronto. It's not right now. I mean, Vancouver's been The weather, I mean, Vancouver's been horrible, but, you know, with climate change and everything. Um, but I don't know. It's going it, to here. It's sunnier more often in Toronto. It gets really cold, but it's pretty. I'm not going to miss the cold. I hate the cold. Now, the only thing that kept you there was burden of truth. No, I moved out here because I wanted to start producing and, um, and Toronto is better in Canada for, for that. So I, I, you know, I did that. I built a bunch of connections and I know a bunch of people here now, but I don't know if it really makes that much of a difference where I am in the end. And at least I'll be close to home you know, with my parents and my sister and her kids and yeah. my friends and the mountains and the ocean and all those things that I love. You know, I was talking to Welling and the one word that came up, first of all, he says, hi, he sends his love. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi Tom. I feel yeah. like I just saw him yesterday. He listens. He, you what? I feel like I just saw him yesterday. You saw him in Paris. 
Yeah. How was Paris, by the way? You love Paris. I love Paris. You do. Um, it was weird. It was crazy. It was the <laughs> first thing I'd done, you know, in the midst of COVID. Uh, and it was packed and just the convention was packed. A lot of fans? City, yeah, a lot of people were there. I mean, I would think it was a smaller space because I don't think they had originally expected that many people and they couldn't get a bigger space. So it was it was so busy. Um but, you know, it ended up being fine and it was nice and it was nice to talk to everybody. And and the city itself was wonderful. I was there for like a week afterward and it was sunny yeah. the entire time and gorgeous and the food was delicious and it was, you know, everything. I would you do. Want. Your your face lights up when, when I say Paris. It's just... <laughs> I do. I love it there. I'm, I'm a sucker for the city. It's also just so... It's a quite a... That city changes so much. There are so many people that come in. The, the you know the food is constantly shifting. There, uh, there's um, you know in uh, I can't remember all these malls right now, but in one area there's like a massive Vietnamese population. So the food is like this. Like there's lots of great Vietnamese food. So I love how the city is constantly changing, and every time you go, it's kind of a new Paris, and, and I really like that. That's great. You know, when you first started doing Smallville, you were kind of like the shy, you were young, you were 17. You were, do you still feel, I mean, obviously you're more mature. You're a woman now you're doing Yeah, obviously. But when you go to do these cons, do you get anxious? Do you get anxiety? Do you feel like, uh, can I do this? Can I, you know, are you, are you better around people? Because I know you love people, but you're also kind of shy and, you know, a little introverted and you're a reader. (laughs) <laughs> I'm a reader. You're a reader. We'll get into that. Um, but um, yeah. So well, how do you how do you deal with it? Um, how do you approach it? What's your mentality when you go into something like that, a big convention? Well, with like the stuff that we do, the actual scheduled activities, uh, the, you know, signings or the panel or whatever, I really don't find those things too stressful. What I find more stressful is like our free time sitting around with all these um, you know, Other actor actors. types. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Actor types, They're like, right. I don't know, you guys. And I feel really uncomfortable and I don't know what to talk to them about. So that's always the most awkward part. So you're saying you're most comfortable around people and it's the actors and the that side of it that you're more uncomfortable with. A little bit. I mean, I think for me, it's all about, <laughs> like, I know what I need to do on a panel. You know, I get asked, I'm, there, there obviously is like, I'm not a performer like you are. So I don't feel like, I mean, I don't even feel pressure to entertain everybody. I just feel like I just have to answer the questions. You really don't. You do. really don't feel like pressure to be on. You've never felt like that. Like I have this propensity to, you know, just be on, to be the center of attention to, because because that's all I know. And if I don't do that, people will think something's wrong with me. In fact, you'll look at me and go, what's wrong with you? Why are you quiet? No, it's true. I would assume something was off. If, you, but, I do, but do you feel like it's only a pressure or do you like doing that also? I think it's exhausting, but I feel compelled to, you know, kind of get out of my skin and just, you know, be more alive and be more alive with the people Like give them a show, give them something they'll remember. And that's exhausting yeah. for me. You know, it's always being on. It's always then you get home and you're like, oh, my God, I just want to die. And everybody's like, oh, let's go out for dinner after. I'm like, no, thanks. I feel like yeah. shit. Well, I think the I think the fans really appreciate that. And I, I actually I think Tom really appreciates that, too. It's like you take a, a load <laughs> off for him. I I think he doesn't he's great at that stuff, but I don't think he wants to carry the entertainment factor. Um, so it's I mean, I think people appreciate that you do it. Yeah. And it would be weird if you didn't. Do, I can't imagine you just being like relaxed in a chair, just answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't feel like you. M- m- maybe the older I get, that's what will happen. I'll start to kind of just relax a little bit and not. Uh, I'm fine with that. If you make that decision, I will support you 100%. I mean, I can't be 70 years old and beyond, can I? You can, indeed. And how would you feel about that? See, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what you think. I'm worried about what you'll think as a 70-year-old guy doing this. If it makes you happy and it, it brings you more joy than stress, then I would support you being on at 70. If it brings you more stress <laughs> and makes your life worse, then I would suggest you just sit calmly. Yeah. 
but you're enjoying you enjoy yourself when you go there you know what you're doing now you you know how to talk to people you're you're a good spirit but you don't always feel like you have to be on you're just in a sense you're just you aren't you I try to be I mean it's a heightened me obviously I am not I I I will I'm I'm a little more mellow generally um but yeah I'll I I'm mostly just myself right but you know before I got into this i was like welling says hi and we were both talking and then we got off on a tangent on on right. Sorry. <laughs> no it was my fault but uh you know we were like you know she's a mystery she's a very <laughs> mysterious person like we were thinking who is Kristen crook you know what inspires Kristen crook you know and i was thinking uh you know why aren't we married not you and me not like I'm not married. And I, you know, I, there's, there's reasons why, but like, you know, you're not married. You're, 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 when I first met you, you're 17 and now you're, you're getting older. I'm a lot, I'm still older than you. I still got you beat, but yeah. you're, you're approaching 40. Yeah, I guess it's interesting. Like I, I am, I believe in like long-term monogamous, monogamous relationships. There are things that I get a lot of joy and meaning out of it's just marriage itself feels very like constructed by society and a society that I don't necessarily agree with in every way like I feel like it's something it's something that's sold to us as a way to find some sort of completion or happiness and I and I don't really believe that I believe it's a myth and and I think that <laughs> I mean I, I mean how what I've chosen isn't that different for marriage. So right. like, it's not like I'm planning to just be polyamorous my whole life. <laughs> right. Right. Like I, I prefer long-term monogamy, but I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel like anything I've ever aspired toward. And in some ways I think that I appear as a very like conservative person and, and in many ways I am, but I think my little rebellions against what what I'm sold by my society is what will make me happy. I, I they're just my little rebellions. Now, have you had these conversations with your boyfriend? Obviously, he's like when he knows how you feel about this, the, he has probably you know there he's like I'm I'm well I'm fucking never asking her to marry me because I know what the answer is going to be there. I mean, is there sort of that feeling, or is it? Uh, but, do you think? But Michael, like it's it's we're all. <laughs> legally we're married is that true yeah essentially common law is the same thing is there common law you know, in in you, canada yeah and in the united states as well yeah, i yeah. believe i don't know your laws specifically but you live right. together for a certain amount of time and it's essentially the same you know you haven't signed one kind of a contract but you still need to take into account that you know if he and i are to split up he could sue me for a lot of money, you know, <laughs> like, it's just, it's the same, <laughs> right. it's the same thing. Um, yeah. and, and there's still meaningful conversations about commitment and about our intentions and like all of that feels, it's just the idea of, I don't know, in, in some ways it's as simple as like going, having a wedding or none of those things mean anything to me. They feel so devoid of meaning. And I suppose that's because they've, constantly been presented to me right. as like some sort of a thing that is like of importance and I just don't So it. a big celebration to celebrate Kristen Krupp getting married and the idea of that is just yeah you look at me you just looked at me like Ugh, no you don't want to again you don't want that attention you don't want you don't feel like it's necessary and it's yeah, not something because I mean, most I most girls yeah, Wait, there, no, again, no, well, I was just going to say, most women, I think, you know, at a young age, oh, I want to have kids and grow up and be married. And the guys think the same way. I always thought, you know, I'd be married and I'd have kids by now. And But, you know, you have this more mature aspect of like the whole or perspective of of what marriage is. And it's just like, you know. I don't know if it's more mature, but I didn't get sold. Like, so my parents never said to me, get married and have kids. That's that's the way your life should go. Oh. My parents were like, don't get married. Don't get married. <laughs> Unless you're going to have kids, don't get married. Oh. And it was never, you have to have kids. Right. Like none of that was ever presented as my ultimate end place. Right. Like some sort of completion of my life. Yeah. So they never promoted that to me. And, and honestly, my family, like everyone's really different. Some people have kids, some people don't. Some people are married, some people are not. Like it's just, 
Some people got married older. Some people got married younger. I don't have a family that has all been the same that way. So I've been able to look to aunts who chose not to get married and, you know, others who chose to get married but didn't have kids for whatever reason. You know, I just, everyone chose different things. And I feel really free being able to, like, make decisions. It's a weird place to to have people think that there's some some proper end place and that if you're not going towards that you like yeah. aren't it isn't correct and I don't understand that. I don't understand <laughs> it either. No, it's true. I just I think you know you're right. I mean, what is it? You know, I always think I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be the 70 year old rambunctious guy that goes to conventions and is the life of the party and then goes home and he's alone. I like to find somebody who, but that doesn't mean that I have to get married to them. That just means that I'm with someone. So the whole idea of marriage, and I think your parents are right. I think I have a lot of friends who say, you know, I don't want to, you know, don't get married if you're not going to have kids. So you, have you always thought about, were you always at a, always the mentality of, I don't really want kids. Kids are not for me. I'm not that. That's not, you know, because I think, you know, I'm a little too selfish, uh, you know, and the right. kids have to be the center of attention. If I have a family, you know, that that all has to stop. It has to be like these because my mom, you know, my family, the dysfunction, she was the center of attention. And when you have kids, you can't do that. The kids have mm-hmm. to be the center of attention. And so you have to give so much more. So, you know, I look at, you know, maybe the reason I don't want to get married is because I look at, you know, myself as a child and I'm like, I'll be so hard on myself to be the best father I can be that I don't want to put the burden on myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. But again, I don't know. <laughs> like, you don't want it. You don't want to be alone. And that's fair. But I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think there are so many ways not to be alone. Yeah. And it depends what you're looking for. So if it's a partner, you can have a partner. You can be married to that partner or not be married to that partner. Right. Whatever your choices are. Like, I don't know why it has to be one way. So your parents don't say anything to you. They never say, why aren't you married? That That's not. The- God, no, absolutely not. That's, that's usually parents are like that with, with their kids. I know. I'm very lucky that way. My parents are, are not like that with me. They don't. They, they just want me to, you know, be happy and doing something meaningful, you know? Um, yeah. So whatever that looks like. Are they, do you think, you know, are they proud of you? Do you feel like, you know, I know at a young age, because they were never parents that came on set, right? They were never mm-hmm. there. They, my parents never really did that either. But do you feel like now after all you've done and you're, you know, um, you're very charitable and you're, you know, you, you just, you've done a lot in your life. Do you think your parents have, you, has, you, has your dad ever sat with you and said, you know, Kristen, I'm really proud of you. I mean, we've talked about this a little bit before, but yeah, I know <laughs> not in those words, you know, and I, and I, do you need to hear it? What do I need to? Yeah. I think I did at some point and I don't really now. But I, I don't know if it's so deeply ingrained in me, mm. like like there is some, yeah, like some sort of thing I'm striving to. I mean, do we ever fully get rid of that? I mean, that takes a lot of work to not want to please your parents. I know, I know. It's kind Good of what God. we're trained to do. Fuck. But I think I know what what makes them proud. And in some ways, those are the same things that would make me proud about myself. Right. What that comes from, I don't know if I just internalized all the rules that they <laughs> yeah. and values that they had. I don't know. Right. But, but I think like, I don't know, I look at my life at this point and I'm like, okay, I've got it theoretically, hopefully a chunk of time left and I can start investing more in my community. And that's what I, that's what I want to be able to do. Like what we do is really great. And we can talk to a lot of people and we can reach a lot of people, but I, I, I want to be more invested in like the smallness of my community um, be able to, you know, volunteer and make an impact on, on the ground. And I think that's kind of what my next, where do you want to volunteer? What do you want to do? Well, I am interested in so many things. And so that's what I need to figure out. I mean, there's, um, a few women's shelters in Vancouver that I'd like to work with once I'm there, but also, you know, there are things that I like on the ground, things I'd love to be able to do just with, you know, the environment. Um, like I, but I have to start to, suss out 
in Vancouver specifically because yes. I'm going back now. Everyone knows. Um, <laughs> and I just <laughs> everyone knows. Well, Vancouver is a very big place. BC is a big place, so it's not like they're going to know where you are. But you know, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about yeah, that. Worried. But it, yeah, yeah. So I just need to just get a kind of foothold in my community and feel what's going on. I feel like I know more about Toronto now than I do Vancouver. So. Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at BetterHelp. BetterHelp Online Therapy is uh, somebody, uh, a company that's been with me for a while now. And um, if you listen to the podcast, you understand why they're really helping people. They're helping people like my friend Ryan here. Ryan, you still go to BetterHelp? I still go to BetterHelp. And how much is it helping you? It is helping immensely. Yeah. A lot of my friends are like, is this, is this re the real deal? Is BetterHelp? I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. man. It's, uh, a lot of people are using it and really liking it. I get letters all the time sent to me that say, hey, thanks for, you know, your better help uh, sponsor because they're really helping me. Yeah. And, you know, you definitely save a lot more than going to, you know, just getting in your car and going somewhere. Um, you know, those therapy sessions are expensive as hell. Yeah. And better help is definitely a lot cheaper. Uh, you know, many people think that therapy is for uh, other people. But utilizing therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to understand them, not avoid them. And we've been taught um, that taking care of our mental health shouldn't be a part of everyday life, but that's a huge misconception. We take care of our bodies by exercising, going to the doctor, eating well, focusing on and investing in the health of our minds is just as important. Um, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Ryan, do you see them on camera? I do. You I, like that? I like it. I think it helps for me. It helps for you. You like oh, to yeah. see the person. It's more of a some contact, some uh, interaction. It just yeah. feels... Uh, hey, you just see some kind, empathetic faces across from you. No, I like that. Yeah. No. Uh, like I said, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you could be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Look, give it a try. So many people have tried this. Two million people have been using BetterHelp online therapy. And inside of you listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's right. 10% off for inside of you listeners off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. Inside of you is brought to you by Geico. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Well, of course you would. After all, who doesn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all the things in your life, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. Inside of You is brought to you by Shopify. Ah, it's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. And believe me, this podcast started selling. Our numbers were very low. And Shopify makes it so easy. This is two years later that I've been doing the Inside of You online store. And Shopify really has, these numbers have grown exponentially. They are truly the masters of this. Like mine, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash inside, all lower class, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash inside right now.
shopify.com slash inside. What was it like? Um, you Burden of truth is done, right? Did that upset you? Were you upset that it got canceled? No, we wanted it to end. There was no more story to tell. <laughs> really? There's always a story to tell, isn't there? No, there isn't. That's what the I fans disagree. will say. The fans will say that. They'll say, there's always stories to tell. Yeah, yes, I suppose that's true. But um, the stories that we wanted to tell were, were kind of done. It was a, a show that hinged a lot on... Uh, cases that revealed personal it kind of had a finite structure to it and we didn't want to I mean we pushed it one season extra more than we had planned to um and we were really happy with what we we ended up with and and we felt like it was it was time to retire the characters so you knew it ahead of time or were they did they say hey we're not getting you so you knew the season the last season was the last season did everybody know or did you just know because you're an executive producer no no we all we all knew Uh, i mean mostly it was weird because i thought that the cbc would announce that and they never and they never did so we were always like can we talk about this can we so we just it was like a weird it was a weird situation that way but yeah i think most of us knew it was the end yeah and how do you how do you react now you know at your age and the the amount of work you've done when it ends are you sad are you you fulfilled are you like do you you just kind of move on and go what's next I, i think the i think the latter but i it doesn't negate how meaningful the experience was right especially on burden of truth i it was such a meaningful experience and the people that i worked with and the stories that we got to tell meant a lot to me so it feels like that's that's meaningful but when i leave a show it feels like i'm it feels like okay done (laughs) (laughs) but it's always felt that way i don't know maybe i think i'm weird that way you're not a crier you're not a big crier i i am i'm a crier but i i don't know that i cry about (laughs) like work that much. What do you cry about? A lot of things. I'll cry at movies, I'll cry at books. What's the I last cry... thing you cried about? What's the last thing you cried about? I think I might have cried in a succession episode about something <laughs> recently. Was it succession? No, I watched Nomad Land for the first time. Did you watch that? I didn't see it. Ryan, like, you've seen it? Yeah, it won the Oscar last year. Uh, it just the won best the picture. Oscar last year. It won the Oscar for what? Best picture. Really? I didn't see it. It was Frances McDormand. Uh, she's just on the road. Nomadland. Nomadland. It's, yeah. It's beautiful and really? sad. It's very sad, but hopeful. Um, it's like, it's kind of like a road movie. Really? Maybe not in a way it is. It seems like a road movie to me. It was beautiful and about America and about... Um, like mortality, but also like the effects of capitalism and how capitalism fails us as a society and the people that get left behind and how you find meaning in your, when you become useless to society, that a society that values you for your ability to produce. Yeah. Are you an ugly crier or are you like, just kind of like, Oh, you know, I mean, when's the last time you had an ugly cry, Kristen? Because I have some of those every it's once been a in a while. long time. A long time. You know, those just like, I can't, I can't get it together kind of cry. Yeah, it's been a very long time. Very long time since that's happened, Thank- thankfully. Because that normally happens when something intense has happened. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Jack Reacher. Are you going to be in Jack Reacher? I am in Jack Reacher. Yes, I am. How big of a part in Jack Reacher? I mean, like half the episodes. Half it's the like- episodes? I had no idea. Yeah, I it's not like I'm like on the lead cast or anything. I just, I'm in like half the episodes. It's a, it's a, I got, I have a, you know, Georgian accent and I'm. A Georgian accent? Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> like Atlanta, Georgia or Georgia. The. Yeah. It's a little more, it's a little more thick <laughs> because I couldn't find, I couldn't find the perfect balance on the Georgian accent. Um, but she's still like an educated woman. Right. Uh, but, but she, uh, I can't give away too much. There's like a twist, but right. yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was weird. It was weird, but it was really fun. I've never heard you. Oh, that's not true. You've had an Indian accent. 
in, in something. I did. Right. You did that. You did that very well. I, but I let, had a British accent and Ben Hur. I had a British accent. Yes. I did a British accent for a video game. What's the easiest accent that comes to you that you could just jump into at any time? I'm not going to do it now, God Michael. Damn um, it. <laughs> not not a Georgian <laughs> accent British for is me. My best accent. Like when I say British, it's a very like London night. Like not like I am not that good at accents. <laughs> I'm fine at it. Do you it's have fine. to really work at it? Do you have to? Is this something you get a a voice coach and really sit down with them and, yeah, and work? Yeah, I'm great with sounds. I'm I'm, I'm really good at like. I'm great at mimicking sounds, so I'll work with a coach and I'll learn it fairly quickly. But there are some sounds that are just tough in every accent, just because my my the way that I speak English just doesn't translate that well. Right. Um, but I I love it. It's so much fun. Yeah, you like diving into it. Do you still like acting as much? Because I never really thought of you as someone who loves acting and then i see your just your career take off and you do you're doing all these shows and you're the lead and the producer and and you know earlier you were saying producerly 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 is that right producerly producerly you were so. you you enjoy like you want to produce more like and do you think that you like do you do you still love acting or is it something like you know i'd like to move away from acting and if i could just produce and and do your charitable work you would do that now, is, it, is that a tough question no, yes, and no. I love. I do love acting. I have a lot of fun, but I don't always have fun. <laughs> Explain that. Explain that because I ha- I feel the same way. I don't like being well, on set for fourteen hours doing the same thing. I get really. I feel like you, you know, get bored. I get really bored. Right. I don't get super. Although I haven't worked on a big budget production for a long time, so except for Reacher was like a. It's. I have a lot of money. Um, <laughs> But I am used to, you know, doing so many scenes a day that you don't settle. You do like what two takes a scene and you're gone. Like it's so fast. Right. So right. you don't have time to get bored. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's just about sometimes it's just really draining. I, I, I think acting is really draining. And especially when you're working on a TV show. Um, it's also really gratifying in those experiences because you get to live with the character for so long. So, so you get to dig, you know, deeper and deeper into somebody. Um, but I, I just, I think it's, it's the emotional work of it, especially because I normally am playing characters who are, it's normally dramatic stuff. So I'm sad, traumatized, uh, whatever it is. Um, and that sometimes becomes exhausting i also don't love being in front of camera as much anymore i mean not that i loved it before (laughs) yeah i was like wait a minute it's not any better than it was really why is that do you still are you still shy are you still just what what is it about being in front of a camera well i think on a on a vanity level i think getting older is weird as a woman in front of the camera um especially (laughs) to be frank because like i haven't i think i've become pretty decent as an actor, but I wasn't hired because I am like the best actor in the room. So when you kind of get cast in a pocket of being pretty or or whatever it is, it's like a weird thing to, to go through the process of aging in front of the camera. And in many ways I, I like it because I feel confident enough to let myself do that. And I feel like I, I can do that. And that's the only way it's going to change, but it's also, an uncomfortable process. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, definitely aging. You look back and you look at when you were younger, not you, proverbial you, but all of mm-hmm. us. And I'm like, God, my face was so thin. I was so, uh, you know, whatever it is, you're looking at yourself and just judging yourself. Yeah. And I, you know, I wish I could just sometimes just let go and just be like, this is, exactly. this is who you are. Um, exactly. and this is, this is your, this is aging. This is life. This is part of it. And, um, you're going to get older and you're going to have little things on your face and people are going to go, Oh, look at that. Oh, they look. Old. And I always hate that when people go, God, they look older. I'm like, yeah, it's 20 years ago. Yeah. And I think that, I think the reality is we, our show is pretty successful and that was a long time ago. So we're constantly going to be compared to us then, you know? Um, yeah. and you know, you go to conventions and there's just, you know, our photos from, you know, 20 years ago yeah. constantly. So it's just, it's, it's a constant 
conversation that I have to have in my head yeah. just to be like, this is good. This is okay. This is like normal. doesn't matter uh, what people are talking about. Ultimately. You um, go through this, it. you go through this every time you film or every time you're in front no, of the camera. No, I don't. I'm, I'm not that self-conscious, but it's only when, like if I see dailies and I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a very attractive shot. Uh, and then I'm like, that's okay. Kristen It's not about that. It's about the scene and the character. Like right. you, like when I watch actors, I'm not going like, Whoa, that's an unattractive shot of them. I'm going, Oh my God, that scene is so good. Or I love yeah. the way that they, that the wrinkles in their face move in that scene. Or the or commitment, the commitment, emotion. the commitment of the character, the devotion to the, to the role, the, that's, those are the great actors. You don't really have to worry about like what they look like. And like, let's go to, cause we were talking about it earlier, like Frances McDormand <laughs> is a genius. She is so good. And I am fairly certain that she, she is not analyzing herself in that way. Yeah. I think when you can do that, then you've really, you've gone to a good place when you could just stop worrying about what you look like. Cause we all do it to a certain point. There is that vanity. There's that you want to look the best you can. So when people, cause it, you know, film lasts forever and that you're like, you know, this is my image, but at the same time you look like you look and you, you can't really control everything. And you're, it's just stress that you're, you're dealing with that you can't control. Well, and it isn't the sub substance of what we are. It's not the substance of the work that we're doing. It's it, it very, that doesn't really matter that much when it comes to who a person is. Yeah. But again, we've been conditioned since we were quite little. <laughs> That's very true. How do you, um, prepare for a role? Do you think that now that you're getting older, that you have to be on top of your game with exercise and learning your lines and things like that? Have you changed anything or, or what, what, mm, I've changed tons. I didn't know anything when I started. I've, it's taken me all this time to kind of patchwork together some sort of a, a process. I mean, I love research. I love school. I love research. You love school. Like, research Are you still going to school? Or are you done with school? Yeah, I'm almost done. And what's your degree in? Uh, it's a it's a general bachelor's of arts degree, but but specializing in history. But no forensic science, huh? No, although I was looking online yesterday um, to see if there were some you know <laughs> fully online master's programs, and there are some like uh, criminal psych programs out there. But I'd have to you know change my I'd have to get a couple of other courses I think right. before I could do that. Yeah. Um, but yes. So I, yeah. right, we were talking about acting. Yeah. yeah so we, I, what is I, what is your pro process as the Canadian say? Process. Yeah, I mean, I, process. that's extreme. But I love research and I like crafting, you know, character backstories. Like I love getting a real deep sense of who a person is, what their life has been made up of, um, you know, all the usual stuff. And yeah, I think at this point, I mean, Smallville was a different beast entirely, but I... I, ha I have to know my lines, especially the last show I did, which was so much legal, yeah. legal jargon. And I'd have courtroom scenes block shot. How do you learn your lines? I uh, just run them constantly. Constantly before? Well, you beforehand until, until the day, until I had it. Because I get nervous. Courtroom scenes, I get nervous because there's a lot of people there. It's like doing theater. So there's a lot of people I'm performing in front of and then I, I get scared. I don't get scared normally, but just with all those people. So I have to deal with my nerves and I'm trying to like navigate all of this courtroom jargon. And that's, that's gotta be really stressful. Did you ever think it got, I wish I just had a cue card. I wish I just had an no. ear wig. No, no, I couldn't do, I couldn't, I couldn't act and have that. Some people could, I couldn't do that. But you have like monologues that you have to go up there and do, right? Yeah. And that scares the shit out of you. When I'm in front of people, yes, absolutely. Because it, the more people there are in a scene, the more, and if they're moving, the more it takes to reset the scene. If I'm by myself, if you and I have a scene where we're in a two-hander and I have to like yammer on at you forever and I, and I fuck it up, I can just go back. But if there's like a bunch of people and we're all doing stuff, there's props, we have to go. It takes so long if you mess up to backtrack. Right. Um, and people lose their concentration because they're background performers and you fuck up and people laugh and then you've got to like get everyone concentrated again. It's just mm. too much.
Inside of You is brought to you by Creatures of Habit. That's Creatures with a K. Creatures of Habit is an in-your-face lifestyle and wellness brand rooted in delivering nutritional, healthy habits alongside cozy apparel. The founder's story is one of hope, change, adversity, and now success. Michael Chernow made a decision 17 years ago to change his life from struggling with addiction and mental health to living a life of wellness. It wasn't as easy as it sounds, but the choice to find a few healthy habits to commit first thing in the morning was his gateway into a better way of living. And one of those habits was oatmeal. Meet the protagonist, an incredibly delicious, highly optimized superhuman oatmeal packed with 30 grams of plant-based protein, vitamin D3, omega-3 fatty acids, probiotic, and digestive enzymes. This is not just oatmeal. The protagonist is your daily wellness insurance designed and created for convenience. Whether you're running out the door or like to prep the night before, the protagonist comes in four easy to whip up recipes. Just add hot water overnight in the fridge, in the microwave, or into a smoothie. And because we want you to operate at your absolute best, in addition to being plant based, the protagonist is also gluten free, soy and dairy free, non GMO, and allergen free. I love that. Those are all the things that I look into for health, for especially, you know, I'm getting older, man. I, Ryan, I need to. I need to eat well. I need something on the go. I can't just be eating crap and chips, you know? So this is a really good alternative. Uh, hop over to creaturesofhabit.com. That's creatures with a K, creaturesofhabit.com. And use the promo code INSIDE15. That's INSIDE15 to get 15% off your first purchase. Creaturesofhabit.com with a K. And use promo code INSIDE15 for 15% off your first order. Remember, we are a direct outcome of our daily habits. Some habits will break you, some will make you. Creatures of Habit is here to support you on your journey of making greatness a bigger part of your life. Inside of You is brought to you by Wondery. Hey, how do we make the most of our time here on Earth? How do we bring meaning to our life's work? And what is the best emoji to use when texting? These are the important questions asked on the weekly interview podcast, Life is Short with Justin Long. Justin chats with celebrities, actors, musicians, artists, and more about how they can get the most out of life. Recent guests include comedian Rob Riggle and singer Amy Mann. He digs deep, and each episode goes beyond what you'd expect to hear on an interview show. And in an all-new episode, Justin talks with actor Billy Zane about his long and storied Hollywood career, which started with a small role in Back to the Future. Justin's candid interview style pulls out some unexpected stories from Billy, from his time on set in the new comedy series MacGruber to his villainous role in international blockbuster Titanic, which he admits he secretly played like a comedy. And of course, you'll find out Billy Zane's favorite emoji, too. Life is short with Justin Long. Well, Justin is one of the most likable guys I've ever met, and I think everybody in Hollywood agrees. And he, like I do, gets people to open up, and that's what you want to see. And so uh, I definitely love and recommend Justin Long. Life is short with Justin Long. Listen to Life is Short with Justin Long on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Are you disciplined in uh, terms of uh, exercise? Is that something that's incorporated uh, in your life? Michael, I was a competitive gymnast. Both <laughs> my parents are very fit. I have exercised since I was a kid and I, I will always do it. It's so important to me. I just, it's funny because I'm taking a, um, Basic a uh, anatomy. What physical was fitness class at school right now. I actually just got my final exam before I got a on. A physical fitness class. Yeah. So it's a health class. Right. I study. It's basically for people I think who are interested in getting into like, kinesiology or personal training or that kind of stuff. But I just took it because I'm interested. So I've been like building fake exercise programs for, <laughs> for people, um, for fake hypothetical people. And do one for and me. I, and I, you want me to create a program for you? Yeah. But yeah, that would be great. But you already work out. I mean, I don't work out very much. Probably a couple times a week. You need to be but... getting mostly Michael. You just need to make sure that your cardiovascular health is really good. I don't do a lot of cardio. You have to. 150 minutes of moderate to, vis moderate to vigorous physical activity per week. 150 what? Minutes. It's not that much. Two and a half hours is what that is. 
two and a half hours. So you can go walk really fast for a while. You can go for a jog. You can just make Ooh. sure that your heart rate is up at a decent rate. Jeez, Ryan, do you do that? I was trying to calculate. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, Kristen? What do you do? Minimum, guys. What do you do? A fair amount. <laughs> no, I mean, are you on a treadmill or do you go for a no, run? No, I like running outside. You like but running outside. I only outside. started during the pandemic. I hated running. I hated cardio. Right. Yeah, with but my I, back, I like though, it. it's the impact. So I can't really do that. But I can go on brisk walks. Yeah. I could, uh, you know, I could bike if I want to, but is I'm on a hill. Is it your back? Yeah, it's just like it's not great for your back when the impact. What about swimming? I, I, I do. I am a member of a little club that has a pool. Swimming would be perfect if you could get in some swimming and something that you liked or like. Um, 150 minutes like of swimming. Like a stationary bicycle? I have one. I just haven't used it. But for your back, do you, is it like an upright? Are you okay in an upright bicycle or would, are you better? Up, upright's fine. I mean, both are that. fine. Yeah, I think I should do just, that. You only have to do it like five times a week for 30 minutes. You're really uh, intense about this 150 minutes a week. <laughs> like there's something that you've read in this book of uh, physiology. Uh, what is it? Yeah, I think that the the research suggests that you get a huge boost in benef- health benefits at 150 minutes per week. Maybe my so, anxiety will go down if I just uh, it do will. more cardio. It will help your anxiety. Really? Do yeah, you- and you need to do two days of, of resistance training, which I think you already do. Resistance, like weights. Mm-hmm. Do you have a trainer or do you just do it by yourself? No, I have an all women's gym that I go to right now in in Toronto, and it's like all it's like fun because it's it's all barbell strength training. So we get to lift heavy, and I like doing that. Don't you like going to an all women's gym so you don't have to have guys hit on you and stare at you? Yeah, I, I do, <laughs> but but I don't know. I don't know if that would happen as much any anymore. What, what do you mean um, anymore? You know, men are. Men are maturing? No, men are <laughs> tend to gravitate towards younger women when they go to hit oh, on people. Oh, Kristen, you don't I'm, look your age. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm just making a comment. Okay. On the, right. Like 15 years old is when I got hit on the most by 15? grown men. Oh yeah. Oh God. That's gross. I'm sorry you had to deal with that shit. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's something that probably haunts you, doesn't it? That's probably why, in a sense, you might not want to have kids because you're like, you know, they have to deal with that and all that shit that they have to deal with in the real world. No. I I mean, I don't think I've thought about it that way with kids, but yeah. But it, it's awful. And a lot, of, a lot of girls go through that at that age. How do you feel about it being the 20th anniversary of Smallville? Does it, does it kind of, do you, do you think about that? Do you think like, holy mm-hmm. shit? What, what, what do you think about? Time goes by really fast. Yeah, it sure Doesn't does. It? Yeah, it just goes by so fast. I think that's mostly, and with the pandemic too, because it all happened at the same time. These year, the year and a half of the pandemic went by so quickly. And then having the, you know, because we didn't, there was no real differentiation in the days that all kind of blurred together into this one massive time that just was like what it's already been a year and a half already and then with the 20 year anniversary i was like it just goes by so quickly yeah you know do you miss anything about it is there anything you miss that you think back you know i really had fun doing this i i miss this person i miss this sort of camaraderie i you know i miss working with tina tioli and yeah. i miss joking around with steve Oben and i miss having steve Oben was our ones. wardrobe guy who just uh Let's just say Steve was a, a, a great energy on set and spoke his mind and would just tell it like it is. <laughs> he did. He did indeed. I remember him walking in the trailer and go, here's your shirt. And I'm like, uh, I don't really like it. He goes, I don't care. They told me to give it to you. Just you can wear it or you don't have to. I don't really give a shirt. <laughs> it's pretty much dead on. We were young. We were young and eager and, you know, I was... I just remember it. It just feels like it was so long ago. It really does feel like it was long, a long yeah. time ago. It's like another lifetime. 
It is it's weird. But what do you think about when you're 70 or 80 and people saying they just they remember Smallville? That's what is that OK with you? Is that does that bother you? Do you want to be known for no. something else? Do you do you hate talking about Smallville? No, I don't hate talking about it. I also. <laughs> what people remember, I hope that the substance of my life isn't measured by things that people remember me for in the general public. Like, I'd like the substance of my life to be smaller, if that makes sense, and deeper. How do you want to be remembered? Yeah. I, I don't know. I've never, I've honestly never thought about how I, because I'll be dead. <laughs> but, but I do, I, I want to have built meaningful relationships and made some sort of positive impact on those closest to me. I think that's it. I, I don't. And the world. I, I think that you are someone like you want to help with women's shelters. You're always, whenever I talk to you, you're always looking how you can help, how you can help someone's life. I think that that's always been a part of you. Yeah, that has that has been a part of my life, and it's you know been it was derailed slightly, um, and then I feel like I'm coming back, finding my way back to understanding what that means for me. And, and going to school has been really helpful for me to to get a better grasp on the lay of the land and yeah. and have a deeper understanding of where we're at. Would you ever do a, would you ever come back to the DC universe or would you do Marvel? Would you do a Marvel movie? Would you do a DC movie? Would you come back on a, on a show like Arrow and play a character? Would you, is it something that you don't really think about? Is it something that you would consider or is it, uh, you know, how do you feel yeah. about that? Well, we get asked that question a lot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, I get um, asked that all the time. Yeah. So I would never... I mean, it would depend what it was, obviously, but I'm not like immediately opposed to it. Do I struggle a little bit with how much Marvel's taken, like taken hold of the cinematic world? I do a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, you know. People have fun and they love it, and I think I guess that's what's that's what matters. So, but yeah, I wouldn't say no to something like that. I'd, I'd want to know what it is. I couldn't say yes or no until I knew what it was. What's Not a that character that you would like to play? What's a character, the kind of character, if you were going to be a superhero? What would it be? Super, could I not be a superhero? Okay, what about a villain? Yeah, I not mean, to be a villain. Okay, <laughs> would, would you rather be Lex Luthor than Clark Kent? Yes, I would. I would. As an actor, that would be really fun. You had a really fun role. I've always thought that the villainous roles were really fun. More like complex. You, a little, there's a little more freedom. Yeah, I always felt like you thought, oh, Lana. Lana, what is she moping about this time? Like you always felt like I want her to be strong and I want her to be this. And, you know, it, 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 it took a long time for that to sort of evolve. It did. And I loved it when it did. It was really, I think as an actor, like that's what's fun is being able to play like secrets and hide stuff and manipulate and Ooh. not present exactly what you're feeling. That's what's fun in acting is kind of all of those layers. Yeah. I'd like to see you as a dark character, someone that's just kind of vicious, vicious and conniving and just so out of character that would i mean have you gotten to play something similar to that because you've played some great characters but have you ever gotten to do something where you dive in and play something really dark that's against everything you know morals etc i mean broadly smallville gave me a few opportunities like that but they were so broad they were really kind of arch you know, not kind of nuanced looks at that. I think with Joanna, which is the role that I played on Burden of Truth, she's obviously not an evil person, but there were things she did that were morally questionable. And she stepped up to the line on a lot of, on a lot of um, <laughs> wanting to get revenge or trying to destroy somebody's life or whatever it is. So she was constantly kind of pressing up against that line. And I, I found that interesting. Um, and I guess that's villainous behavior in some some ways. The morally questionable gray areas that right. people flirt with or or justify moving into. Would you play if a producer called you and said, Kristen, I need you to gain about 25 pounds, 20 pounds, yeah. and play a character like Charlize? I don't know how like easy that would be for me. Yeah, actually. I don't know either. But I'm just saying Is like it? a Charlize Theron kind of character and monster. 
Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. I would love that. You would love that. Yeah. You would just stop working out, stop your 150 minutes of a cardio. Well, <laughs> There are some, like, it would be fine, but I also think that it's not great on people, actors' bodies to, no. to gain a ton and to lose a ton. That's, like, really un- unhealthy generally. But, I mean, if it was something great, yeah. Actually, it's funny. I was watching, um, last night we were doing a contemporary Jane Austen movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Which is basically just Bridget Jones and Clueless. Right. So we were watching Bridget Jones and I was like, she, she's like thin in this movie. Like, I don't understand. And Renee Selberg, I think, gained, you know, a good 20 pounds for that role. But she was tiny in it. It was, it was crazy. It's a slight detour. I made a slight detour. But you but wanted her to be bigger. Yes. In the book, she's bigger. I never read the book, but from what I understand, she's supposed to be chubby. And uh, I didn't think she was chubby at all. So you're but willing to be like, chubby. You're willing to be chubby. You would be chubby. You would do anything if you love the role. Yeah, if it was healthy. I, I would never want to hurt myself for a role. I'm hmm. not that committed. Because there's some roles. There's like that guy in Walking Dead. They say he would, you know, he did. And I'm not going to say his name, but like, you know, he didn't shower a lot. He smelled on set. He wanted to be right. that kind of character. Could you see yourself doing that? What's the point? Isn't that what makeup's for? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Touche. That's, I think. Uh, I get it. If an actor, if that's their process, I commend you. I am not that committed. I will never be that committed. But I love that people are that committed. Sometimes it's tough to work with, but I... I just, if that's how you get the results and I get to watch an incredible performance, you do you as long as it's not harming anyone else. I would love to one day, like, I don't know, either cast you or see someone cast you as a role that's just completely out of character for you. That you just, I think you'd be really good. And I think you would dive in pretty hard. That'd be fun. I, I, that'd be great. (laughs) I'd like to blacken your front teeth out, give you that Georgian accent. Maybe a gimp eye, maybe one eye that kind of dragged, you know, just slightly off. Sure. Just completely affect the way you look. It I wouldn't would be easy. That. It wouldn't be easy because you're a pretty girl, pretty woman. I could say that because you're my friend. Um, this is shit talking with Kristen Crook. These are questions from my lovely patrons. If you guys want to join Patreon, go to patreon.com slash inside of you. These are uh, people that want to ask you some questions. So you could answer them if you'd like. Okay. All right. You're doing great. This is great. I, you know, when we first talked, you're like, I'm boring. I really have nothing to say. I don't know what you're going to talk about. But we find something to talk about. I don't know if anyone else will find it interesting. I think so. I, th- I, love to, I love talking to you. It's like the only time I really get to talk to you unless we see each other at a con or something. I'd love yeah, to actually true. have dinner with you one night when we're in the same town and really catch up and just like, you know, it's been a while. Are you going to Mexico? I might. Okay. I might go to Mexico. You're going to Mexico. Yeah, unless COVID goes crazy. Right. Are you going to Australia? No, I don't know about Australia. You should go to Australia. I think you'd have a wonderful time. It's I'm really sure fun. I don't know if they'll invite me to Australia. Michael. Well, let me see what I can do. I, I know the people. <laughs> I know the people. Uh, Stefa A. I think it's Stefa. With Burden of Truth finished, do you have any plans or any projects in the works, or would you rather take a break for a while? Good question. I have... Um, a project in development right now that I'm working on with Peter Mooney from Burden and Eric, my guy. So we've got something in development, very early stages, which is really fun. I'm liking that. And then I'm really pushing to try and graduate. I'd like to graduate and be done with this. Uh, so I'm getting close to that. Hopefully, I just have one more semester. Um, if if not, then it'll be that I'll be done after this. Is summer. school expensive? Yeah, it's not cheap. What does school cost? Like for a semester? It depends how many credit. It's basically by credit. You're paying for it by credit. Were like you by, doing? Uh, were you doing like, burden while you're going to school? I tried. I can't do classes while I'm no working. No way. It's too, much work. too much work. My brain can't. I've tried. I just. It's like when I come home and I have to study, and I don't have a ton of turnaround, and I I can't. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not cheap. Yeah. Um, did you mostly do virtual because of the pandemic? The whole thing was virtual. The whole, whole thing was virtual. was virtual. 
Did you like that or do you like to be in class? No, I love it. Do you know how young people are in their bachelor's degrees, Michael? <laughs> They're 19. <laughs> I am an elderly lady. You are Come not. Here. Compared to 18, I am. But I think, you know, well, well whatever. I, I understand. I see that. I, I hear you. Well, I mean, would you want to sit down and, like, have discussions with you, your gray hair? and Not yours. I my don't gray have a gray hair. hair. Do you know what would be more embarrassing? What? Cheating off one of these kids. Cheating Being a 49-year-old and having to cheat off some 18-year-old <laughs> who's in cotton. Like, hey, dude, can I borrow your notes, bro? Like, dude, you're like 50. Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, fuck, I want to cheat, man. I need to cheat. I need to get through this class, bro. I want a degree in kinesiology. Um, little Lisa, what was one of the hardest scenes you had to do on Smallville? Hardest? That could be anything. That could be like you were embarrassed to do it or it was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Or We had that stupid episode. Witches, the witches. No, that one was stupid. But the <laughs> vampire episode. <laughs> I got in so many fights with Greg Beeman about that episode. <laughs> that one, that one was really hard for me to do. It just felt super gratuitous and no one would listen to me about it. So I had to fight my way through that one. What about physically? Have you, has there ever been a role that's just so physical that you're just so exhausted? Michael, I played Chun Lee. <laughs> that's true. Was that absolutely exhausting? Yeah, we worked, it was Thailand. So we worked seven, no, six days a week. Once I worked 13 days straight and it was mostly nights and it was all fight sequences. I was tired, but I had a lot of fun. By the way, do you think you could do it now? No. Really? Why Maybe. is that? Hmm? Because when you're younger, you just have more energy, more. Working working if i had enough turnaround and i had a weekend maybe yeah but it was demanding it was taxing did you ever get injured yeah because i was practicing the sword sequence and i'm not used to swords and they're really heavy and so my wrist i woke up one day and my wrist was like sw like fully swollen and i just had to but that's the only injury i i got on that production right. and i did crazy stuff i jumped off of things with like on wires from um what are they called the, the cranes on the in the harbor just flying through the air. I did tons of fight sequences. I had, I had it. I had a blast. Do you? Yeah. So you had fun doing that. Would you? Do you? Would you would do it again? You would do something again if it was the right schedule, was the right part. You would love to be more. Oh my god! Physical. So much fun, and I'm pretty. I'm pretty good at it. Like I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm you're amazing. a gymnast. You were a. You were an amazing I was a gymnast. Yes, you were an amazing I was, gymnast. I was in <laughs> you so did. I like can fight. <laughs> Can you just still do some karate kicks? I think you've given me a karate kick before. Yeah, I can, I can do it. My hips aren't, are, I don't do a ton of stunt work anymore. Like when I was on Beauty and the Beast, I was fighting all the time. So I was used to stuff. I have to train a little bit to get my, my full range mobility back. But yeah. Dave P, what are you looking forward to most in 2022? Graduating from university. That's what you're looking oh, forward to. moving back to Vancouver. What's the first thing you're going to do when you go back to Vancouver besides see your parents and your family? What's the one place you want to go to in Vancouver that you miss? I want to go hiking. Where? Well, don't say. Maybe you shouldn't say. No, I like I like going to, I don't know. There's a there's a, a mountain that's very famous in Squamish. Um, that's great for hiking. It's beautiful. That's what, that's what I'd like to do. And go to the beach. Lots of going to the beach. There's no beach here. And see Tina. Tioli. And see Tina. We'll hang out and we'll go to the um, little Spanish tapas place that's near our house and we'll have delicious food and drink wine. I love it. Danny, I enjoy Kristen's book recommendations. Is there a favorite book that she would like to adapt for TV or film? Adapt? So many, I have to check because I never remember what I've read. Um, ooh. Ah, I wonder if they're doing it. Have you read uh, Ishiguro's? No, you haven't. But for the people who have read Clara and the Sun, it is so beautiful. One moment, please. Yep. I have returned. This baby. It came out this year. It was really popular. Clara and the Sun. Yeah. And I, I'd be really curious to see this in a in a film, I think. That's a big book. How many pages is that book? Oh, it's not. It's... 
It looks big. It's not big. How, it's like are there pictures? 300 pages. Okay. But the, the, that's not like no. the margins are quite significant. Yeah. So that's a book that you would consider. I mean, yeah, this book is gorgeous. He's a, he's a beautiful writer. He wrote, he wrote never, never, is it never let me go. Never let me go. Never let which me go. A great film. Did you see that film, Ryan? Ryan? No, he didn't. Ray Harada. What was something that you were surprised to learn about one of your castmates? That could be any of your castmates. Surprised by one of my castmates. Hmm. I think originally I was surprised that Erica grew up in like rural Alberta in a very religious family. I didn't know that. But you talked to her. I don't remember talking about that. Yeah, she did. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to bring that up when I talk to her again. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. I think it's interesting. It's amazing. Sometimes you really just, when you're on set, you don't know the people you're working with. You just kind of like talk to them about like surface kind of things. And, oh, I saw this movie this weekend. But like, you really don't know them. Like, I feel like I don't, I mean, I, I we never really talked in depth too much to the podcast. And now I get to really know a lot about you. I feel like I learned a lot about you. Yeah, I'm an open I'm book, though. I'm an open book. Yeah. You were never an open book. No. You had to get to really know Kristen. Yes, I have to trust you. You have to trust. That's just I understand that. You know, you won the Canadian Award of Distinction, which <laughs> which is kind of cool. Like, did you have to give a speech? I did. You did. Were you nervous as shit? I was so nervous. I wrote it, and I was really nervous. And it was up, so I didn't have to memorize it. But like. It was it was funny because I think Bill Hader was getting a special award that day, uh, and so was Paul Feig, and so they were the ones that were sitting like right in front of me. But I was very nervous giving that speech. That's an honor, though. How cool is that? Yeah, it was lovely. I felt very honored. I don't think I'll ever win a, an award of distinction. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> I just don't think that's an award that's going to be in my uh, on my. Uh, do you do you have the award? I do. It's up there. Oh, nice. I get it, but it's too high. Yeah, it's it's okay. my People's Choice Awards. Oh. I also won People's Choice Awards. Oh, I never won a People's Choice Awards either. Look at you. Uh, you know, I know you had scoliosis as a kid. Do you have any more issues with that? I mean, I still have it. It doesn't go away. What is it? What happens when you have scoliosis? I mean, do you have any kind of back It's a problem? curvature of your spine. Right. So normally, it depends how bad it is. Some people have to get surgery. I never had to get surgery. Mine's like mild to moderate. Um, mostly, it's pain. So I noticed it when I was you know, a gymnast and my coach saw it one day could see the curve in my spine, but I was getting really bad, like shooting pains down my sciatic. And it was just, my back was killing me. So I, I kind of had to chill out on some of my gymnastics stuff for a while, but as an adult, it doesn't really bug me unless I'm stand. Like if I go to a museum and I'm walking around for hours and standing, it's my lower back gets sore, right. but mostly they always told me just stay strong and, It'll be fine. So that's what I do. Solid core. I have mild scoliosis as well. Do you? I do. Very, very uh -huh. mild. I have a, a little thing called spina bifida something, a culta. That's just a slight little thing that's there. It's a slight, but, uh, you know, I've had, you know, all, all the shit that I've gone through. But, um, hey, Kristen, do you, uh, do you, you, you don't go to therapy, do you? Have you ever gone to therapy? I haven't. I, that's I all right. I'm not judging you. Wary of these kinds of things <laughs> not that i don't think people should go to therapy i think it's great i just for you it's not something that you you know it's just i've spent so much time analyzing myself in other contexts that i <laughs> okay that's, just, fair. <laughs> that's fair i don't I, I think one day i will once i find the right you know I think for me, what's the most important about going to therapy is that, uh, you know, I could talk objectively to people, but also things come out that were subconscious that I didn't know were, were the major reasons behind some of my flaws or some of my insecurities or anxieties. And so things come out that you're like, oh, that's what's causing that. So there's more of an understanding of why I do the things I do and where I've been and what I've become and evolution and all that stuff. So that's, that's kind of, that's what's helping. What me. kind of therapy do you do? Do you do like CBT? Yeah. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. So that's like, you know, um, and I just try, I'm trying the somatic therapy. Oh, interesting. I've what, heard about it. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And she, you know, she was like, 
The other day we we're having a, it's obviously a zoom, but she said, if you put your right arm under your armpit and right hand under your arm, under your left armpit, and then your other, your left arm just below your shoulder mm -hmm. and kind of just hold yourself for a minute, it kind of calms you. And she had her reasons for doing it. And I started to do it. And I really started to feel calm. It's almost like you're holding yourself, like you're giving yourself a hug. It's weird. But like I just started this, so I can't really talk in depth about it. But yeah. somatic therapy. Um, yeah, there's so many. There are so many options therapy-wise. Yeah. Having studied a bunch of like entry-level psych at this point, there's just there's just so much you can do. Yeah. Was there anything else that you anything coming up or anything that I should know about that I haven't mentioned? No, I don't think so. I think you're pretty much well. I'm. I love that you talk to me and you're always so open. You could easily say, you know, I don't want to do it. And I would understand, but you know, it's like, I don't, you know, it's like every year I'm like, I got to catch up with you. Yeah, <laughs> and some, uh, but I really, I really enjoyed this. And I really, uh, I thought it wasn't boring at all. I hope people think, feel the same way. I don't think you're a boring person. I think you are, like Tom said, a little bit of a mystery. I think you'll always be sort of a mystery and I wish I was a mystery, but I'm not. I'm really, I, I'm not a mystery once you know me. It just takes time. And I don't see you guys enough for it to be, especially like Tom. I've hardly talked to Tom like yeah. ever. In the, in the span of our many years of working together, we haven't had a ton of conversations. Well, one thing's for sure. We both really like you. We both really, nice. yeah, genuinely like you. And it's nice to have worked with someone for so long. And even though there's some distance and we haven't seen each other a lot, to still, you know, care for someone and, and appreciate them for who they are and respect them. And that's, uh, that's what we have for you. So Thank I, especially, you. so thanks for talking to me again today. Thanks, Michael. Yes, this was great. Um, are I'm, you off to go play now? No, we're going to do some ads for the show. Cause the ads keep us afloat. But are you going to Disney world? Oh Disney yeah. Movie? I'm going to be going to Disney world soon with some friends. And you know, I like to be a kid and go on rides and just forget who I am for a few days. So that will be nice. And I got a Christmas tree, but it's dying. I don't know why it's dying. I water it. How long ago did you get it? And then my, well, probably 10 days ago. And then my grandmother's like, why do you have a Christmas tree? You're a Jew. I'm like, oh, I'm not really practicing. And I think Christmas is cool. I like <laughs> Christmas trees. Why the fuck can't I have a Christmas tree? Because I don't care what you do. You could have a Christmas tree. So anyway, um, I love you, girl. Thank you so much for, for coming on again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later. Have fun. Bye. bye. Ryan, say goodbye to Kristen. Bye, Kristen. Bye. I mean, there's not a sweeter person. There really isn't. You got lucky with that co-star. I mean, yeah. She could have been, like, think about it. She could have been a pain in the ass. I was a pain in the ass. She was just delightful. She's always delightful. I love having her on. People are interested. People love her. They do. So, Kristen, if you're still listening, which you probably won't listen to this podcast, I love you, and I appreciate you, and uh, you're coming back next year. So, get ready. Um, thank you, guys. Again, if you want to get anything from the Inside of You online store, go there. New lunchboxes signed by Tom Welling and myself, some of the lunchboxes, a bunch of other great stuff. Sunspin.com if you want to get tickets to the next Sunspin show, which is February 26th, 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be a blast. And um, Patreon, join Patreon, the lovely Patreon that really helps the podcast more than you know. So if you want to give something, go to Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash inside of you. Thank you, Christian Kruk, for being a great guest. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing okay. I've yeah. recovered from being shocked inside of my head. Yeah, you did. You were shocked wasn't inside. Worried about me. Yeah, I was worried about you for a yeah, second. I'm, I'm good. Is it weird that I got worried about the next guest who's going to wear those headphones? I'm wearing, I'm wearing my same headphones. Okay. So. It's all me. I just, I, I generate a lot of static electricity, <laughs> especially these days. It's so hot in LA right now. And I just cannot stop shocking myself. Oh, uh, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, buddy? I got to stop listening to shock jock radio. Shock that's jock radio. <laughs> all right. Let's give a shout out. Uh, as one of the top patrons, you get a shout out on the podcast every week. So these are the top patrons. Let's shout them out. Nancy D, Leah S, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Kristen K, not Kristen Krug. 
Amelia O, Allison L, Raj C, Joshua D, CJP, Jennifer N, Stacy L. Correct. See if I just throw it out there, he's going to get it. Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Roger. Uh, and Hammerstein. S. <laughs> Kimberly E, Mike E, Eldon, Supremo, 99 More, Amira, Santiago M, Chad W, Leanne, P, Janine, R, Maya, P, Maddie, S, Belinda, M, N, N is correct, <laughs> N is correct, uh, where is that one? Chris H, Dave H, Spider-Man Chase, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, that's Ray Harada, uh -huh. I know that, Tab of the T, Tom N, Liliana A, Michelle K, Talia M, Betsy D, Chad L, Rochelle, Marion, Meg K, Dan N, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Super Sam, Coleman G, Deb Nixon, Michelle A, Jeremy Piven C. Correct, Jeremy C. Cody R, Gav Inator. Gavinator, David C, John B, Brandy D, uh, Vor. Yavor is correct. Camille S, V C, Joey M, Willie F, Christina E, Adelaide N, Omar I, Lena N, Eugene, and Leah. Chris P, Nikki G, Corey, Patricia, Heather L, Jake B, Bobbitt, Ed A, Abol, Abol F, Joshua B, Abol. Did I say that right? I hope I did, because they, she messaged or they they messaged me, hmm. and I was messing the name up. Abol, Abol, Abol. Mm -hmm. Tony G, Joshua B, Sean R, and Megan T. Those are the top tier patrons. They give back in more ways than you can believe. Keep the podcast afloat. So if, again, if you want to give back, you can go to patreon.com slash society. This is always a treat for me, uh, having these guests open up about their lives. Spread the word if you like it. Um, you know, just get the word out. There's so many podcasts to listen to, Ryan. There's so many podcasts that, you know, I'm just blessed that people are still listening to mine. Hopefully they find it interesting and they get to learn about people. It's not just Hollywood bullshit. It's it's real stuff, hopefully, and, you know, real people. And uh, that's all you can hope for. And a little bit of Hollywood bullshit. A little Hollywood bullshit. But, like, ultimately it's just about a candid open conversation about, like, hey, man, you know, what's going on with you? What happened to you? What? Where are you? What are what you doing? What happened to you? What happened to you? It is a lot of that. It is. Uh, <laughs> but I hope it doesn't get old, and I hope you stick with me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. I hope your week is beautiful. Um, well, I'll see you next week. Ryan, mm -hmm. from the Hollywood Hills in California. I'm Brian Tales. And I'm Michael Rosenbaum. A little wave for the camera. We love you, and... Uh, Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you, like I said. And I'll, I'll talk to you before you know it. Right, Ryan? <laughs> we'll, we'll talk again. Mm -hmm. All right. See you.